this next identity is very important. It's how to go back and forth between a polar and rectangular formulation of a sinusoidal steady state waveform. So let me firstly share with you what I mean by polar versus rectangular. Polar form is the form that we as engineers like. It's equal to some amount of a cosine wave. I'm going to arbitrarily call it C here times cosine of omega T. And then we've got some sort of, of angle. I'll call it phi. The other way to draw an arbitrary sinusoidal steady state signal is as a pure cosine. And by that, I mean a cosine with perhaps an angular frequency, but always zero phase. And from that, subtract some amount of a sign, a pure sign with no phase. And so given the fact that this, again, we've said is the standard way that electrical engineers like to write it, how do we go back and forth between these two formulations? If you're given the rectangular formulation and you want to convert it to the polar formulation like you'd like to get, the amount of C is equal to the square root of your A squared plus your B squared. So you'll square this, you'll add it to the square of B, take the square root, and that's your C. And to find your phi, it's a little bit more complicated that is equal to the inverse tangent of your B part over your A part. And that's actually not totally correct. This is, you've got to add to it. <laughs> this simple version is what's in many of your textbooks, but the truth is that you've actually got to add 180 degrees to it if your A is negative. And then the question is, how do you go to rectangular? And that in some ways is easier. Your amount of A is going to be, if you're given polar formulation, you can find the rectangular. Your A is equal to C times cosine of your phase angle. And your B is equal to C times your sine of your phase angle. And while these equations are important, I do not suggest you remember them at all because all you need to know is this picture. So here's a picture and we are going to graph the amount of A rectangular form I'll graph the amount of A on this axis. And I'll graph the amount of B on the vertical axis. And if you do that, they meet at this point right here. And the amount of distance that point is away from the origin is the C of your polar form and the angle that it makes with respect to the positive horizontal axis is your phi. So in one diagram, you can convert now between rectangular and polar forms. And now you can see why this form over here is called rectangular, because the A and the B, when drawn on a rectangular set of axes, make a rectangle. And you can see why this is called the polar form that we prefer, because this is just a way to describe the exact same point using polar notation of distance from the origin at an angle. So just to make this very clear, let me give, let me give an example. Let's say that you have a waveform that's equal to uh, three 
cosine of 70 minus 4 sine of 70. And you want to convert that back into a polar form like an engineer would use. This amount of cosine corresponds to our A. So our axes, we'd have 3A and we take a look at minus B, so our minus four, so our B is positive four. By Pythagorean's theorem, this line would be the square root of nine plus 16, which is the square root of 25, which is five. And this angle is the inverse tangent of four over three, which is 53 degrees. And so this whole thing is equal to, as an engineer would write it, five cosine of, we haven't changed the frequency, but we'd say it's 53 degrees. And this is how an engineer would write it.